Hello, and welcome to another episode of Power on Podcast Bebop. I'm one of your hosts, Mulligato553, and with me is the indubitably pernicious... I don't know, that's it, that's all you're getting out of me. Mr. Sushi B, how you doing? Oh, that was plenty, so... (laughs) (laughs) I am doing just fine, and ready to engage in another episode of Bebop. And how are dun, you? Dun, dun. I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing doing good. Good, good, good. That's a good day. Great. The end. <laughs> episode yeah. seven. It's, yeah, the end. Ta-da. Um, yeah, so episode six, Sympathy for the Devil. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue this trend of at least starting the episode and then kicking it off from there. But we, I think it's a good move that they uh, start with this kind of creepy surgery mm-hmm. um, that's like a dream sequence flashback-ish sort of thing that's going on mm-hmm. that uh, is go and then it's like, oh, it goes to, to, uh, to Spike and uh, Spike Eye, and then he wakes up. Ah. Uh, Sweating in a in a uh, like blues bar with some some sweet harmonica tunes going. Yep. It's it's it is it is a start, especially after what we just witnessed in episode five. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> yeah, it is it is a very interesting start. Um, without spoiling, if you remember, because I can't. That sort of opening sequence. Is that mm-hmm. related to the end of the last episode, or is that supposed to be in the distant past? I think it's distant past. Okay, because he's he's pretty banged up after last episode. So. I mean, I I could be wrong. It could be going into it. Um, I yeah no, I could I totally could be wrong. Now you think about it. Yeah, because like he's he's pretty busted up, and the kind of creepy vats with. I assume this is the idea of uh, cloned organs or grown organs and and so forth. And Mm. him falling out of a window, and we don't really see him being picked up splat splat off the ground or anything. It's it's kind of like, oh, I I wasn't sure if this was implying the injuries he had suffered way, way before, or if this previous, this, this just previous episode is implying Mm. that you need a little bit of work done. No, no, we're going with your theory. Spike's a clone for the rest of the series. We've we've cracked the code. I like how this has become my theory, even though you're the one who just (laughs) brought it up. It's actually your theory. (laughs) I'm saying he pretty banged up. (laughs) You're like, oh, he's a clone. No, no, he's a clone. Yes. And he was... Consciousness has been transferred from one to another. Oh, that's... Yes. Certainly puts a twist on things. (laughs) Yeah, we're uh, going. He was saved uh, from being evaporated in front of Lavos too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess yes. it's part of your yep. theory yep. as well, because they put the clone yes. in front and brought him back, <laughs> yep. transferred his memories. And... Yep, yep, mm. exactly. <laughs> and no, I actually uh, you bring up a point about I always interpreted it as a, a way back when mm-hmm. kind of thing, um, but it could be upkeep after taking such a beating i just my thing is is that uh, when it comes to comes to the uh paying for that sort of thing Mm. uh, that's where i kind of lean towards it being something that he would have at least been able to deal with back then Mm because it doesn't i don't know my memory is a little fuzzy on this myself now i think about it I think when that happens is when he kind of vamooses from the syndicate. Right. I think is when that's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would imagine he would, he would still, he would have, have at least, at least a little bit of that, that sweet, sweet syndicate money to, to spend on things. Mm-hmm. Maybe. And I think that's and that's because he has to do that, he sort of has to fall on to doing bounty hunting hunting and stuff like that. 
Mm-hmm. It's possible. At I, I could, you my, could look at it the other yeah. way, too. If he was seemingly kind of on the run from the syndicate, which is kind of how I always interpret some of that stuff, is that he's completely out of that loop, and he was in hiding, and they could find him if they had to do it. So I, I, I don't know. It, it's it's really hard to say. Mm. But it's not... I, and I like this sort of thing, because it's not pinned down to where it's... Uh, you know, this is specifically, it has to be this kind of way. Right. There's a little bit of fuzziness and it's not fuzziness to where it's like, uh, you know, pants on head, stupid fuzzy, <laughs> you know, touch fuzzy, get dizzy. Well, Yoshi's Island. I don't think we're going to be fuzzy. spending six hours on this episode to try to decipher, uh, <laughs> two minutes of, of an, of one episode. I, I am not going to eat fuzzies and fart all the time. <laughs> Even though I totally would do that for like an hour playing that game. Hoshi's Island's the greatest. Uh, best level. But, I haven't played it. So. <gasps> well, okay, uh, not true. I played, I played a little bit of it, but. Yeah, I get you. Not, not, not a lot. There's only so much That's time. Right. <laughs> There's only so I much know. time I and money you. to go I around. I'm, it's actually, I'm, it's actually, I'm, it's actually a pretty what? expensive game now, too, surprisingly. Like, you not know, like deathly was... expensive, but expensive enough where I'm like, I don't really know if I want to spend money on that. That was one of the first games um, that I remember seeing in a catalog and seeing the price of like $114 or yeah. something like that going, holy crap! I'll never have that kind of money. What is this? This is ridiculous. And then I think my brother got it for, for Christmas or something, like a year or two later. Hmm. Um and he he played it a little bit, but I played it a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus. Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, but um, yeah. Th- so, uh, what are some things that you enjoy about this episode? I think one of the strongest things about this episode is if you like westerns, there is a a very strong western vibe, especially in the back half of this episode. That last sequence is is totally full on. Clint mm-hmm. Eastwood, name name your favorite Western actor. Basically, no sound, and you have a standoff. So, mm. it's, so if you enjoy Western, yeah, you probably that, like that. That drum mm-hmm. bit there at the end, and then the harmonica is very much uh, reminiscent of Once Upon a Time in the West with uh, Charles Bronson, and mm-hmm. his character is harmonica. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, and everywhere right. he goes, he's playing the harmonica. So that, there's definitely that kind of. I don't know if that's the intention. I think there is a lot of intention with the, with most of the stuff in this series, though. That's that's very. Mm-hmm. We like Hollywood eyes movies and so forth and so forth. So I I feel like there's probably some intention to to maybe connect it to that. Yeah, it may be intention, but not a whole uh, like a a horribly strong connection in the sense of like an homage for it mm-hmm. yeah. and that it's like going beat for beat for it. Cause for sure. it may be there. Like the dressings are, are there for it, but it's, um, it, it hides itself. Well, I would say, mm-hmm. and, and I, now I'll get to it at the end, but, um, I'll, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Okay, that's fair. So, um, yeah, there, there are, uh, the, there are some good lines, and there are some lines that I use on certain things. Uh, one is by, like, I know I'm going early and uh, like this, but I, I have to bring this up. The line by Fatty when Jet, tries to interact with him so that Spike can get to the bounty. Mm-hmm. Where he's going about listening to the blues. Like Jet has one with Spike when Spike uh, you know, says, oh, you know, um, what does he say something about like uh, a hipster baby hipster or baby whatever? It's cool. like, ah, oh. yeah, it's like, because yeah, it's like, ah, oh, you've been listening to the. I know the line you know, you're saying. It's, it's, it's disgusting at the same time as being funny. Oh, it's, I love it. I love it. But uh, yeah, it's like Fatty, this, this character that's, this it gets introduced in this episode. It's like I've been listening to the blues since I was in my father's sack. <laughs> oh, love that line. I use that line every now and again, just when I want to like throw somebody off on something. 
Because <laughs> they're like, wait, what? <laughs> uh, it's just such a... Uh, oh, um, uh, yes, I am eight years old again. <sighs> well, since we're jumping <laughs> but... into quotes, I, I ended up having to write down at least uh, three sets of quotes. So. <laughs> oh, goodness. So though I, I, I preferred the jet one before that one. He's like, don't be dense. I started wailing the blues when the doctor whacked me on the bottom, on my bottom He's, on the day yeah. I was born. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one too. Yeah, but I like the fatty, and I like the interaction with fatty, how they're both kind of like, <gasps> like they, they don't want to deal with one another. <laughs> right. But they're, they're relatively friendly later on in the episode. They're, they're, they're professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it, just the the animated style of both of their faces. Like, oh, damn it! <laughs> Him again. <laughs> so yeah, do you want me to save these quotes uh, for later, or do you want me to just throw them all out there? Um, we can save them. I just wanted to sure. bring that one out out just because I had to. Sure. Like it's that's just <laughs> so 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 good. Um, I like that we get this. So in the first episode, we get an asteroid um, referencing Tijuana. Mm -hmm. Or not just referencing, but I mean, it's called Tijuana. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, it's a bit odd, right? Mm -hmm. We're kind of like, oh, we're out in space. Uh, that's Ganymede. Mm -hmm. Like, there's these other places, but this is Tijuana. Mm -hmm. And the you start to, this episode really starts to paint the Earth kind of kind of took a hit mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a uh it, it, like i like this really cool um oh like what uh, what sword i want to use um back 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 flash of just this when character and the earth and just ha the coloration of it and how it's all nice and mm -hmm. the fields and everything. And then there's this bright flash. A uh, chunk of the moon is, is now blown off. Mm -hmm. And then he's just, it's ash. And then he like rises from it. It's such a cool imagery for it. Mm -hmm. It's just like, oof, that's cool, dark, but really cool. <laughs> so it's a taste of Majora's mask. <laughs> the, the giant moon. You've, You've met with a terrible fate, haven't yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, this this episode definitely starts to delve into the supernatural, which we will get in a few uh, additional episodes. Mm -hmm. This is really the first one to sort of either stem away from a typical just bounty chase or a chase movie or um, a Western, and we get this supernatural element that we haven't really encountered yet. Mm-hmm. Now, this is something I like, and I know mentioned it in the, uh, I think I did with the, like the Bond, in, in some of like the Bond episodes and stuff, is that there's a, a, a sci fi element, but it's like a, it kind of tangentially goes off. It's like, okay, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm fine with that. Like, I, I kind of like that sort of, not necessarily that's playing loose with the rules of science, so to say, but, it's its own thing. Like, it, to make it, to have it, have its own little thing going on doesn't bother me. So with what's going on with when, I, it's, it's fine. Like mm -hmm. that supernatural folksy almost thing. It's, it's a cool, I guess, spirit of humanity that I, I feel like gets lost sometimes, partially because, uh, there's the, I don't see him anymore or anything, but I remember there being like the, uh, not necessarily countdown videos, but like lengthy videos on different spooky things like 50, top 50 Bigfoot videos in the last year or something. And they would have the, the, the voiceover would be this person that's got like this valley girl talk and it was just like this. And it's just like, wow, I want to go through the TV or the, computer or whatever and strangle this person who's mm -hmm. talking and it's just i don't know i really like that sort of folksy element and i it's there's something endearing about that to me i don't know it's mm -hmm. just so it's nice to see the, the spookiness come out i think this episode kind of lays the groundwork to 
once you watch the first six episodes that you kind of come to the realization that um, Cowboy Bebop plays out kind of similarly, aside from a few episodes, to an anthology series. Very mm-hmm. much in the vein of the Twilight Zone, the Outer Limits, you name it, right? Any of those types of shows that have those elements. Mm-hmm. Um, where one week you could be watching something that's totally pure horror, and then the next one could be body horror, and then the next one could be just uh, intrigue, the next one could be whatever. And this episode starts to really break that open even wider. Because the other episodes, there's a level of sort of, I guess, continuity in the type of content, whereas this Mm -hmm. one is the first one that really starts to step further away from what you know in the first five. Mm -hmm. So and I'm fine with it too. I think it's it adds some nice. It just it breaks up the the, the series. It's not just you're you're it. There's not been any issue with any of the first five episodes, but this just adds a nice little thin thinly veiled layer of just you know there's some of this stuff that happens out in the in the outer outer rims of this universe. There's the, there there's a little bit of that, like you said, that human intrigue, right? To hear, oh, you know. Where did these tracks come from? Well, we suspect there mm-hmm. could be there could be this this animal. A cryptozoologist believes that there's a possibility that this thing exists. It's so, a chupa thingy. Yeah, yeah chupa sure. cover. What, whatever, whatever <laughs> it might be, right? The Jersey Devil and so forth. You know those those mm-hmm. black holes that you fall in watching YouTube at eleven o'clock at night. When you know you're supposed <laughs> to be in bed and you're starting to get creeped <laughs> out because you're sitting with no lights on and you're like, yeah probably time for bed and then you lay down and your brain kind of you know you're not like nervous or anything but you're just kind of like you know and you can't quite fall asleep because you have too many questions still in your brain mm-hmm. you're like that was that was that was weird <laughs> it's a, so the ones i watch don't have value or i'll speak they have the nice uncomfort you know uncomfortable feels like the person's talking over your shoulder voice <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> well, like I said, it had been it's been years since I've seen those, and a lot of it was schlock. Like mm-hmm. it was just, it's so stupid. Mm-hmm. And then to have that over top of it, I'm like, I, I just want to watch the thing. Why can't I have this the ridiculous alleyway footage of Brazil where the alien steps out from behind the the light post and then steps back and then disappears because he saw a soccer ball allegedly give me those again i don't need <laughs> Where though? i need more of those again it's one of just... one of my favorites not to get too far as i remember seeing one about i would say a few years back now but it was from the 90s so it uh-huh. had all of these really bad computer generated things but at the time people were were legitimately questioning it <laughs> like so so and you know what i think it was jonathan frakes that that hosted it too <laughs> i'm pretty sure but it, it was like is it real or just an elaborate hoax and you're watching it's like of course it's a ho- look at how bad these computer graphics are like they don't look anything realistic but at the time people were like i've never what, seen anything is, like that before these could... aliens running me edition what's yeah. going on well it was and i'm it's... sure it was a fox channel type is special of some kind probably somewhere around the time remember when they had the alien autopsy thing that was a big deal for a bit oh there. right right so I think well was that was yeah. somewhere in that neighborhood but these were really bad and i think at the end of the episode they said it was just made by university students in sweden <laughs> <laughs> i always love the uh the, big the 45 seconds of jonathan frakes saying it was it's fake <laughs> like have you seen those little videos oh, they just yeah, yeah. all those it's yeah. like ah, it's unreal ah fake fake <laughs> yeah well that's when all those channels are really getting into it too at that point right and they, they were starting right. to get some pretty decent they were able to combine some of the computer elements with these still the practical elements mm-hmm. so and the practical elements had improved quite a lot so that you could question something right like and, and being in black and white it was like a bit more huh like at least, no at least longer for the could moment. you toss a, a pie, a pie, no pie dish, and throw it out there and catch it with a camera, and say it's aliens. <laughs> We're past those days. You mean like the ones that used to come from Eastern Europe, and you could clearly see it's on a pulley. <laughs> like it starts, it's, it's like halfway, and you can see the guys like, oh, come on, and it's it's starting to get tangled and stuff. Is it real or is it an elaborate hoax? <laughs> Oh no! I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh. that was the thing he kept saying. 
is this is this real or could it be another elaborate hoax <laughs> ancient alien theorists believe <laughs> ah, well that that was a few years off still <laughs> i know i know <laughs> it's the same same kind of energy <laughs> yeah the patterson bigfoot video still still dissected to this day though so they did something right to make people still question that, that that's not fake. Uh, yeah, but there's people who also throw out some really silly things nowadays. That's true. So that are far far sillier uh, than than yeah. Too many conspiracies. Sasquatch. Sasquatch. <laughs> that's like that's sorry I know the Simpsons, but you remember when they they became the Sasquatch thing, and Homer Homer falls in the woods and. Oh. They, they <laughs> but before that, that. Guy, they're like uh, Sasquatch in the, in the in the forest, and that guy. It's like Jim. We can see our worst watch again. Ah, oh, damn it! It's the guy in the Sasquatch suit, and then and then it cuts to Homer. He's like, oh, because oh, he's got the bees in his mouth. <laughs> and, and I like how they're at the end. There's like, well, through uh, numerous testing, we do believe this just appears to be a man. <laughs> And they're like feeding him uh, raw steak and stuff. And he's like, chewing on it. And he's like, <laughs> uh, oh man, I forgot about that episode. That's yeah, the one where uh, he's where he's where fighting go down with Flanders the stream and everything. Yeah, it's where he fights with Flanders. Flanders gets that huge Winnebago, and then he buys that whole beater, and he's like jealous, aren't you? And, and he's just like, oh, that's a pretty good one. He's like, you're jealous. <laughs> that's that's an jealous old Flanders. one. That's maybe season one or two. It's a really old one. It's a goodie. <laughs> Anyways, back to this one and the elements of sort mm. of the supernatural. Yeah, like I, I like the look of when he is uh, a demonic detective Conan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> like, yeah, the look, but also I like the the green eyes. Mm -hmm. like those green eyes are just like, it, you know, it doesn't come across really until. Spike tries to impede on what's going on or mm -hmm. what he thinks is going on, mm -hmm. but that sort of piercing devilishness mm -hmm. that just kind of comes out in him is just a really nice touch. Mm -hmm. This is an episode I wish we could have expanded upon because I, I was quite intrigued by the giraffe and zebra story. Like mm -hmm. we, we get enough of the backstory to explain sort of who they were to some degree. And mm -hmm. sort of, you know, in the crime world and so forth. But we need to see a bit, a bit further. Like, yeah, what, what kind of? I know they're not main characters or anything, so there's no need to do so. But it, we don't get a lot of side characters that are one-offs in this regard that are inter interesting enough to want to get more info. But for for me, those two would, would be neat to get some more information. I would say I actually wrote this at the the top of my notes on this is that this episode probably would be a lot cooler if it was able to be a lot longer like you said it's got the trappings of a western i just don't think it fits for such a short thing and yeah there's mm -hmm. plenty of tv shows that that, they, that sort of thing but it just for this it just feels like it, it it's you pulled the pie out after like cooking it for 10 minutes compared to keeping it in there for a lot longer mm -hmm. kind of uh, that's what it feels like uh, they're it, they're good things there but it just just doesn't quite uh, cook as long as it needs to mm. yeah and, and when you're compressed for time obviously that's going to happen so it's just right, too bad right. to, yeah there, there seems to be a lot of a lot of moving parts here that could have been explored further and, and enough intrigue it, it probably helps the episode to some degree on the on the end of, of the little the little guy there just because the more details we would have got the mystique would would definitely fade away but it's mm -hmm. the it's the, the giraffe and and even him himself saying um what does he say uh zebra is the third person that he's utilized in this fashion or, or whatever so mm -hmm. it's like oh okay interesting like what what where did these other guys that he went after like what were their backgrounds and, and what was the reason he chose them and there's there's just a lot of elements that, that could have been explored mm -hmm. i agree uh, let's see um um 
something I'm not too keen on in this episode, though. Even though it does, if I remember correctly, it does come up later in the series, is the Alpha Catch. Okay. Kind of thing. It just seems so, like, out of left field. Mm Mm-hmm. It's all it, in this episode. It feels like it's just like a well. We need to figure out a way to kind of continue this. Uh, Alpha catch. Yeah. Come on, just go. Introduce a new piece of equipment. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, that or how Spike knew to shoot at the taxi. <laughs> it seemed a little, little suspect. There's there there are some, and I think this is where I, if if it could have been longer, it would have pieced better together mm. like at the beginning where spike is able to catch giraffe with swordfish like the act of doing it doesn't bother me but it's like how would he have been able to get to there knowing that he'd been in that area kind of thing um since he like split and then also at the end when wins driving the taxi and he him just like it's such a dark thing you know, we had that darkness in episode five, and it continues by showing the darkness in like other characters, like outside of a syndicate. Like this is just some random psycho, and he, he when he steps into the taxi, and then instead of even just say saying anything, just you know pulls out a gun and shoots the driver, and then just dumps him out and drives off. And you're like, oof. I mean, I know that's at towards the end of the the episode and stuff, but <laughs> like. The vicious world they live in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It is vicious as world, yes. <laughs> he's he's trying to make it make it be at least. <laughs> right. Um so uh, but yeah, Spike knowing that that's where like Wen's driving that one is like, oh well, how how how'd you know that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> is it giving off demonic green eyed energy? What's going on here? <laughs> he has a scent. <laughs> or that like um you know the the bloodiness from like ep- the previous episode continues here um and that spookiness comes back where spike shoots shoots when in the head and then he goes up there and checks after he's caught zebra mm. and then there's just like nothing there but this big old blood splatter it's like ugh. Right. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah no there, there's definitely some of those kind of gory elements i guess in this too that kind of lean into that the suit not only supernatural but a bit of a horror theme i guess to, mm-hmm. to some degree so so it kind of spaces itself out here in, into some different uh areas when i think western supernatural the only one i can think of is um uh what's the one with clint eastwood uh High Plains Drifter? Yeah, High Plains Drifter. That, yeah. Where within the first five minutes, you're like, okay, something's not right with Clint in this movie. <laughs> right. Well, there's something that one, off there's here. another one. High Plains, and then there's another one that's pretty much the same sort of thing with mm. Clint. I wish no, I could remember what it is. No, Pale Rider's the one where he's the priest, I think. Yeah, yeah no, no, yeah. Is it's it it's the same concept. Yeah, yeah, Pale Rider. Yeah. Pale Rider's so it's the same concept with those two. Mm-hmm. Um. And there's, it just, High Plains takes it, I think, a bit more supernaturally. Yeah, it does. I think. But I think there's still, with Pale, there's there's also maybe less overtly so. One of them mm-hmm. one of them's more overt than the other. But High Plains Drifter pretty is much one that's the more, much more, yeah. By the time you get to the end of the movie, you're like, oh, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> this is not just a revenge story. <laughs> but yeah, it it works here. Like it 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 just adds something really unique to the to the formula. Mm. So, and and it's it's a a nice kind of swerve and it's it's it really good that they could have very easily placed a very similar episode to say episodes Two, one, two, and three, which were a lot more just freewheeling, you know, kind of. Yes, there's there's elements of of um, of um, suspense to some degree, but they're they're far more mm-hmm. lighthearted, and it could have very easily have gone that route for an episode after what five ended up being. 
Mm -hmm. But I'm kind of glad they didn't just jump right back into that immediately. I got to look up something real quick because I need to remember um, because I'm about to make a point and I need to make sure I'm about to make a proper point. Otherwise, I'm going to feel really silly and I don't want to feel really silly. Um, It has to do with episode 14, but I don't remember which one that one is off the top of my head. Uh... Okay, not so much that one. I was gonna say because for the most part, um, the it feels like a lot of these episodes that are very close to the kind of five integral, if you will, or at least the kind of the main thread of uh, Spike story for Bebop, that they're either really close to or um borderline with spooky episodes or kind of a like horror like four and six are kind of spooky 11 people always like to be like ah the bebop crew died in episode 11 and it's like okay stop stop being silly like (laughs) i mean i get i get why you would say that please stop (laughs) don't do that (laughs) um uh and then once things kind of get really, really serious at the end, um, brain scratch takes place and then hard luck woman leads right into real folks blue. Like the last three episodes kind of like a trilogy in itself. Mm. Um, and then brain scratch takes place right before it. So there's uh, these kind of creepy. Cause I, f- I find brain scratch to be really, really creepy in a lot of ways. Um, but there's always these like creepy episodes that are bordering really, really close to those episodes. And I don't know if there was a, a conscious reason for choosing to do that or, or what, but mm-hmm. the only one that's, that kind of fails to do that is episode 14, but it's more of an ethereal sort of dreamlike because it's a Bohemian Rhapsody mm. with, um, chess master hex. And kind of being long since gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a little bit more dopey in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's like the only episode that doesn't quite fit in my, my weird theory about why that they're not theory necessarily, but just kind of just odd point to make that there's a lot of spookiness mm-hmm. or horror and dread um, floating around those two, mm-hmm. like those kind of episodes. And I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, it's hard to Life's say. scary, I guess. Yeah. It's hard to say. <laughs> so, sorry on that. Yeah, I just. No, it's all good. <laughs> so. Um, is there anything about this episode you weren't too keen on it? Other than, like, that needing to be, if it could, stretched out a bit longer? Um, not overly, honestly. Like, like I said, I, I, I do remember this episode. And then as I rewatched it this time, it kind of flooded back quite a bit. But I don't mm-hmm. remember this episode being one of the more preferred ones, uh, mm-hmm. you know, upon a, a first viewing. But this time I felt I enjoyed it a lot more. Maybe I just caught a bit more of the nuances and, and so forth. And just having watched a lot more Westerns in the last couple of years might have played a factor into that. Because, like, mm-hmm. that gun showdown at the end is... is is pretty slickly shot and feels very classic. Uh, and and I, I found I, I don't recall in thinking anything of it really that much, like the first time I watched it. But this time, just sort of Spike's attitude at the end, right? What does he say? Something like, you, you, do you understand? And he's like, yeah, no. <laughs> like, As if. Yeah, it's like, whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. then keep that, keep that comment keep that in mind mm-hmm. like i mentioned it in the, the previous episode keep that comment in mind mm-hmm. uh when we do get to the end because this will play into something that i want to talk about when it gets gets all unpacked and everything mm-hmm. so just throwing that out there okay. i'm going to build a case for something and tell me how wrong or right i am in my presumption <laughs> we shall see dun, dun, you, you dun. have time to uh continue to collect evidence until that point. All right, right. 
<laughs> so, I was gonna say like like the you mentioned about the if it could be longer, some of the oddities of Spike being able to pinpoint things is a little poor and how it goes about it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a lot of nice little pieces on here. Personally, uh, like I said, like the alpha culture thing and stuff. The, the, the biggest question I have about this is like, how does Spike get away or get out of that whole police issue <laughs> <laughs> right there as he catches uh giraffe and then he's got a dead body mm. somebody dying and then a bunch of cops show up it's like hey mister what's the dead body about mm-hmm. and then he, he also is able to get away with taking the the ring mm-hmm. without any without any issues i mean that one's an easier one to kind of hand wave on he's like yeah he's like that's ah, mine mm-hmm. what's it to you yeah that's sure um well even when he has the gunfight and he runs the opposite direction of where his gun is seems a little bit suspicious because then he ends up trying to trick him to shoot a bunch of bullets so he can run right back to the other side again well at least they they kept it consistent right instead of he just run over there and picked up his gun you're like hey hold on it went the other direction well yeah i suppose but it just seems odd to the way he was uh, shooting at him, it didn't really make it implied that he had to go that direction. Nah, nah I get you. I don't know. But yeah, you're right. At least it wasn't just, oh, we'll just slide the... <laughs> <laughs> right. When he clearly was... You didn't see Yeah, nothing. the gun slide to the other direction. But it's, right. it's a weird choice still to be like, I'm going to run this way. And hopefully he'll <laughs> stop shooting so that I can just right. walk over to the other way. So. Yeah, please waste all your bullets so you have to reload. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It would be cool to see how Jet processed that bullet. Oh right, manufactured it to make that. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty slick, slick one. That's that's gonna do some damage. Yeah, because when he's possibly. analyzing it, he he even says like he has to do significantly more testing because he doesn't really know what it is, what element it is. Like so, that's kind of glossed over. How how does mm. zebra stay alive? Like 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 is his brain alive? <laughs> right. Is that is that what it's right. implying? Like his brain is alive, but his body is. Well, I guess because his body would probably be a lot more decayed if he was completely dead. I, I, I just oh, yeah, he's what, not, what's yeah, the catac- he's cataconic t- like state that he's been like left in? Like how how, how is it being yeah. maintained? I guess we, we don't get that answered for us either. So yeah, that. that's yeah. There's there's a lot of mm. questions here. This is you know, and part of that also plays into the the folksiness of it, I think, mm-hmm. whereas all the others have been pretty clear to a, a great degree. Mm-hmm. This one being a bit more, not necessarily loosey goosey, but a lot more oddities and, and supernatural going on. It does feel like it is a little bit more on the, ah, we kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of going about on, on things. I mean, mm-hmm. This is this is written by uh, Keiko Nobumoto, and like she did like episode one, episode three. Uh, it's like she did a few of them, mm. she, uh, like Jupiter Jazz, My Funny Valentine. Uh, like she 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 was she was a pretty strong part, you know. She, she did a real folk blues part one and two, mm. brain scratch. Like she, she yeah yeah. Um, this just feels like a bit of a I don't want to say misstep, but um. I think it could have been tightened up mm-hmm. and maybe that's where my wish for it to be longer is that maybe if it had been tightened up a bit, that um, it would have, it would have worked better because mm-hmm. it feels like there's just so much missing that it could help clear this up a bit. Mm-hmm. On that point so. with it being, in that supernatural realm and element, it probably does it some favors here. The the fact mm-hmm. of if I think of stuff like the Twilight Zone, there's always lots of lingering questions uh, when you when you walk out of an episode, and you you know it's nice to have those questions still there, and the 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 nature of the episode allows it to be 
okay, I can kind of forgive this. It'd be nice to know more. It'd be great to, to actually understand this a bit more. But I'm kind of going with it here because the main plot point is unexplained. Mm -hmm. Like the whole the whole vibe of this is kind of unexplained. So I don't feel quite as let down or disappointed by the fact that mm, it'd be good to have all those answers. Whereas like, you know what? Sometimes things left unsaid is, is enough in, in of itself. So. Mm -hmm. But like the last episode, it's it's sort of mm, this is missing that just little bit to kind of get this over the hump and give keep you like fully engaged to be like I I need to know more. Mm -hmm. it doesn't help that the last episode is pretty abundantly clear that answers are forthcoming, whereas this one you're like I can tell this is a one off. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so yeah. Um, anything else that you want to, uh, just the, I guess the, of quotes the quote, there, but other yeah, yeah, like I, I've got another one, um, the back and forth between Jet and Faye, I really like. Yep. That's, that's one I have here. I'm assuming it's Jet probably the same The betrayal comes easy to women, but men like to live by what iron codes of iron. Oh <laughs> no, that's not the one I have. Um, and then, well, now the part that I like is when she asks, like, do you like believe that? Do you really believe that? And he's, he's like, I'm trying to real hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I like that. It's just, uh, cause it's, cause that, yeah, he, that's he himself. Like, he tries to do that as well. So it's a nice kind of extra layer to it that I enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, I like early on when Faye is just kind of, moseying about and just like her not really sleepwear but like her comfortable shorts Loun loungewear <laughs> sure whatever whatever she's wearing and just kind of comfortably wandering around and how she you know uh Ayn's whining for food and she said we well, are hunting dog go find your food we girls are different you know elegant and refined and she's just <laughs> devouring Scarfs, that whatever <laughs> yeah. grossness is in a can like <laughs> And then like throws it out and then just says, Oh, the boys will have to pick up the bounty in this one or whatever. Cause she just, she can't be right. bothered. <laughs> so I, I, I like that one. It, it's kind of plays into again, the silliness of how Faye always wants to convey this, you know, I'm above, I have standards. I'm above, you know, this kind of trivial nature of, of all these things, but she's just deep down really just like a lazy slob. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who just hopes that everything falls into place because she's relied on luck for so long in her life. Mm. Um, but the the one I got for Jet and Faye is <laughs> when Spike says something cruel to her, like, can't wait for you to get the hell off the ship or something. Mm. And she's like, you're always so mean or something. And oh. <laughs> Jet seems like, not me. I'm a nice guy. I have a gift for you. <laughs> and she's like, yay, what is it? <laughs> an official invoice for what for, for all the expenses you racked up since you've been on our ship <laughs> and thanks for your business yeah great anytime <laughs> but it's just his delivery too and he's like not me i'm a nice guy <laughs> i have a gift for you it's that one the uh, uh another one i like is the um when Jet's kind of explaining, he's like, I don't know what this is going to do mm. when it makes contact with him. And it's like, it could blow sky high the oh, moment yeah. it hits. And then Spike's like, kind of makes it interesting. You know, yeah. that's, you know, and he, he, Spike's gone back to, gone back to his, you know, I, I'm, I'm totally a cool guy. I'm invincible. I am invincible. Well, he took a pretty bad <laughs> spill last episode and, back on his feet seemingly in no time mm -hmm. but like the point you said at the end there just that sort of stone cold killer element of the of the character really shines through mm -hmm. at the end and um this is still a yeah, child essentially out. right like he, he he's a child but he's not like it's 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 debatable but no sympathy like it's right in the title right there's no sympathy for for this person based on the deeds that they've done in their life and they've lived more than enough lifetime to be punishable. And Spike has no, uh, no second thoughts pulling the trigger on this, on this dude. But, Oh, that's one thing I hate. Spike gets shot in the face. And when he walks oh, over man. as the kid's dying, there's not a mark on his face. Like just 10 seconds later, no like, carry over. Like, come on. That's, it's that's just, just, that's just lazy. 
lazy animating. All they had to do was just draw uh, literally a line on his face. Well, uh, lazy or just forgetful. Forgetful. Yeah, or I'm just missed mis- an editing. Mistranslated or who knows, right? Some, something, something. I would have mistranslated. I mean, it, yeah, he did it, it, it comes across. I mean, he just got the, got nicked. Yeah. yeah. So. Two little, little blood droplets. <laughs> But it is kind of weird that he walks over and he's blemish free at, at that last moment. Hmm. Yeah. The um. Yeah, and then how it how it ends him just kind of it's it points into you know add this feather to the to the pile of feathers to mm-hmm. put into the cap later of just how he responds to uh, when dying. Yeah, I mean I get that there's this um. You know, this horrible, horrible little creature is <laughs> dying. But um, just how he's like, you know, I, I, he's, I'm so heavy, but I, it's, it's, I'm yet so at ease kind of thing. And mm. do you understand? Do you understand? And then Spike's just kind of like, yeah, I get it as if. Mm. And it's like, yeah, no, he doesn't really get it. Mm. But it's very Western, right? That ending is very much uh, like you would see this in a lot of old Westerns. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you think Clint Eastwood's got a heart of gold because he saved the town or whatever, and no, he just rides off. He could care less. Like, he, he just mm-hmm. did the job because it was for the money or because he had to get revenge or he did, he could care right. less ultimately what the the outcome of the, the people that he inadvertently saved. <laughs> like, he does, he's not intentionally trying to protect anyone in most cases. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm assuming that's kind of what they were going for here. Yes, I know it leads into the other elements of Spike's character, but I just kind of seen it as that, just the way the the camera pans up at the end and stuff too. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I guess the... Uh, bounty this. Bounty time. So if I remember correctly, it was uh, 3 million Wulongs. It was 3 million Wulongs for giraffe. For giraffe. So what are you going to... What bounty are you putting on this one? I'm going to score these until we get to episode 12, and then you're going first. Because <laughs> I've had to score them all first. Um, well, that's fine. That's fine. I, I, I'll, I, I'll score it. I'm just, I'm just it, it, recalling now. I was like, I think I've scored the last five. So I, oh, yeah. No, I've been pushing you to be first on this. <laughs> well, we're going to be flipping that uh, that uh, <laughs> game here at some point. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to be putting a bounty on you. Um <laughs> With with three million, you know what? Like I said, I, I found I was quite surprised how much I ended up enjoying this episode. So I'm going to go with thirteen million wulongs. Oh wow! Yeah, I I, I I enjoyed this a lot more, and getting a lot of those quotes out of this one adds a lot to it mm. for me as well because there's a lot of fun quotes. Okay. So, yeah, I like the supernatural here. Mm. I don't hate this episode. Um, you know, it's just something about it that just every time I watch it, I just sort of my opinion doesn't really change on it. I've always been not indifferent, but I'm like, okay. And I still feel that way. There's just, mm. it, it, I don't know if it's, I can't get over some of the hiccups that it has um, or, or what I just, there's something off about it here in particular that really just sticks me the wrong way. Mm. Uh, I, I, I just kind of give it the even three. I give it the three million. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I don't hate it, but, you know, I like the idea of the folksy bit, but I, I feel like other episodes lean more interestingly into it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. All right. That's all I've got. Any any last last uh, comments? No, nope, but looking forward to what's coming next. Yeah. I'm going to do some, some, uh, some heavy metal rocking. <laughs> can't wait anyways yeah if you got any sort of comments uh, or how you feel about this episode what kind of bounty you would put on it please let us know uh that's that's it so thanks for listening and see you space cowboy <laughs> <laughs>